Welcome to worship at Our Lord's Lutheran Church. This service is pre-recorded. Thank you for joining us from your homes today. On Tuesday evening, our Emerging from the Storm team will meet via Zoom. Then on Thursday evening, weather permitting, we will have the opportunity to gather in the Chapel of the Pines for a brief outdoor service that includes Holy Communion. The service is at 6.30 p.m. and communion elements will be available for you to pick up as you enter the pines. We do require you to stay six feet away from those who do not live in your household and we do require the wearing of masks by all who attend even though we are outside. We hope to see many of you there. Now, let us Quiet our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the prelude. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are <clears throat> forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. A song of peace 
Peace for lands afar and mine. This is my home, the country where my heart is. Here are my hopes, my dreams, my holy shrine. But other hearts in other lands are beating with hopes and dreams as true and high as mine. My country skies are bluer than the ocean and sunlight beams on clover leaf and pine but other lands have sunlight too and clover and skies are everywhere as blue as mine so hear my song O God of all the nations a song of peace for their land and for mine this is my prayer O God of all earth's kingdoms your kingdom come on earth your will be done O God be lifted up till all shall serve you and hearts united learn to live as one so hear my prayer O God of all the nations myself I give you let your will be done the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. You, you are, are great, great O God, God, and, and greatly, greatly to be praised. praised. You, you have, have made us for yourself, yourself and our hearts, hearts are restless until, until they rest in you. you. Grant, Grant that, that we may believe in you, you call upon you, you know you, and, and serve, serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. See the old man in his time-worn coat and vest he sits front row center, hands held high, giving God his best. Looking at him, you wouldn't see much of a threat. But there's this one thing that he does that makes the darkness shake and fret. When he gets down on his knees, the gates of hell tremble. He's rolling up his sleeves And doing battle with the devil He goes toe to toe with demons And in the name of Christ they flee Cause he's a mighty holy warrior This old man on his knees is failing and sometimes he feels so small he sees the world around him is 
there any hope at all? He wonders if his cronies even matter anymore. But then all heaven roars with thunder when his knees hit the floor. Cause when he gets down on his knees, the gates of hell tremble. Cause he's rolling. And doing battle with the devil He goes toe-to-toe with demons And in the name of Christ they flee Cause he's a mighty holy warrior This old man on his Some saint on his face in prayer Heaven's biggest, baddest angels Fly to action at the call From the throne room to the skirmish They are there When he gets down on his knees The gates of hell tremble Cause he's Our first reading is from Romans chapter 7, verses 15 through 25a. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, 
I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my physical body another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my body. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn like fire within us, speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by wise deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite children to come a little closer to the screen, if you wish, for the children's sermon. And then when we're done, of course, go back to your seats on the sofa or the floor in your own homes. I've got a bucket today. I'm going to try to bring it up here. It's really, really heavy. I, I use it to carry things, um, and as I was thinking, I realized that, you know, I've got an awful lot of heavy things in my bucket, the stuff I've carried around. I've got all the things I've done wrong, and all of the disappointments because I can't do what I want to do. Um, sometimes it's that, that I can't be as good as I want to be or do all the, the things I know would help other people. But other times, 
actually these, these, these stones, these rocks, these heavy things, these lumps in me are, I want to do things I know aren't the best things for other people sometimes, but I'd like to do them. And so that's some of the heavy things I carry. And during this time when we have been staying at home or even now when we're beginning to go out more, there's still a lot of friends we cannot see. And so that's a heavy thing too. And sometimes right now we're, we're living closer with our family members and we get upset. I, as an adult, even sometimes get upset over the phone. I raised my voice at my mother last week in frustration. So my bucket's heavy. This bucket's heavy. In the gospel that I just read, Jesus offered to exchange my heavy things for his yoke. He offered to take my heavy things and give me something else. That yoke I'll talk more about in the regular sermon, but the yoke is something that keeps him going the same way as God the Heavenly Father. And so Jesus was very, very close to his Father, and he speaks of this yoke and says that if we'll just let him have our heavy, heavy things, that he will take them. And then what he gives us will be so much lighter, so much more doable than what we've been trying to do and how we've been trying to live. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to give up the things that are so heavy and weighing us down. Let us give them to Jesus and let us take his way of living so that we may know your joy. Amen. Okay, you may return to your seats within your home. And as we prepare for the sermon, let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, for you are our rock and our Savior. Amen. The truth is not always obvious, not always readily apparent. As our gospel starts today, a lot of people do not know who Jesus is. At this point in the Gospel of Matthew, we know that Jesus has called 12 disciples and he has given them initial instructions so that they can go out. He sent them out to imitate him. He is their teacher and he sent them to do the same works he does. So these things we know from these past few weeks of reading in Matthew during our worship services tell us that Jesus has begun a traveling and teaching ministry. But he is still new on the scene of religious life in first century Palestine. Some people see him as a source of wisdom and knowledge. They hear him saying things about God and about life, and it resonates with them. And they are like, yes, that's how to live. That's who God is. That's how I can be in relationship with God. But not very many people have heard him yet. He is minimally known, and he has minimal resources. He is a rural tradesman from Galilee, and he doesn't have prestigious family connections or economic privilege. And so as Jesus is talking today, he begins by talking about someone who is considered even more of an outsider than he is, his cousin, John the Baptist. John was misunderstood and stereotyped. And so was Jesus. How frustrating it is when people assume they know who you are based on where you grew up or where you went to school or your gender identity or the color of your skin. 
Maybe they judge you based on who you talk to or another piece of information that they decide tells them everything they need to know about who you are. While we humans naturally make generalizations based on small amounts of information, when we do that, when we take one piece of information, say what high school you went to, and think that explains who you are and how you act, well, that is stereotyping. And stereotypes often result in discrimination and violence. Stereotypes, in a sense, let us dismiss that person's words or actions to consider them to be less important or of no account. Or sometimes we, we go the opposite direction and we think their words are more important because of where they went to school or where they grew up. But most of the time, we use this to um, kind of dismiss what someone is saying and to act like it's of no account. And for the person who has been speaking to us, that can be soul crushing. It is soul crushing to have people fail to see you, who you for who you really are, to fail to see the fullness of who you are and how what you're offering them comes from your own experiences and the wholeness of your very being. Well, I mentioned that John the Baptist was stereotyped. And as our gospel starts today, he is being criticized for being all gloom and doom. People seem to have forgotten the way in which his purpose was to build connections and prepare people for the one who followed him, who would bring them into deeper relationship with God. Now, instead, what people were remembering is he wore those weird clothes and he preached messages that people didn't want to listen to that were so down. And yet, immediately in what Jesus says, after pointing out what people said about John, he goes on to say that many of the people who criticized John are now angry at Jesus for doing the opposite things. Jesus eats and drinks with sinners, and he appears to be having way too much fun. People are saying all kinds of things, and Jesus is clearly exasperated. But then, right in the middle of talking about his exasperation and his connection with his Heavenly Father, he suddenly speaks words of invitation. Words that climb right out of that situation in Matthew and into our lives. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. What are you weary of? What weighs heavily upon you today? Are you weary of being judged? of being picked apart for falling short? Are you weary of being judgmental? Do you need and want to give up that destructive way of viewing other people? Are you weary of having to have all the answers or of having to at least pretend that you do? Or perhaps you are weary of not knowing not knowing what's next, not knowing what's relatively safe, not knowing how long you will have to carry your accumulated load of sorrow, the load of sorrow that is greater because of all the things we have missed, you have missed out on in these past weeks and that you are still longing for. At times you feel lonely, at times, the pain of the world that you carry in your heart feels unfathomably heavy. And so today, through the scripture, I want you to hear one thing. Because you need to know that one thing is sure. Jesus promises that he will give you rest. That is the one thing that is sure. 
And yet in the same breath, Jesus lets us know that that rest depends upon an exchange. In order to give us rest, we need to take Jesus' yoke upon us. A yoke was a basic tool for farming in that day. A yoke is a simple piece of technology that transfers part of an oxen's burden or another farming animal, part of that animal's burden in pulling a heavy load is transferred to another animal and then they share the load. The animals who are yoked together now share the load and because of that yoke, pull in the same direction. They go the same way. Who would have guessed when Jesus said we needed to take his yoke upon us that being yoked to Jesus is less burdensome than being free to wander off in any direction we choose? When we look at Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, it doesn't seem like his yoke is light. And yet Jesus assures us that it is, and that by taking his yoke upon us, we will know freedom. Freedom is on our minds a lot this weekend as we celebrate the Declaration of Independence. And I know our celebrations are smaller and quieter this year, but there are still fireworks. If we can't see them in our communities, we can see them on the television or on the computer screen. And some of you are still putting burgers and hot dogs on a grill. And maybe some of you are even making homemade ice cream, that old staple of Fourth of July celebrations. Or you might be just heading a little ways away to Bobby's frozen custard. And like most years on this Independence Day weekend, we do give at least a little bit of thought to the importance of justice, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We think about what was being declared on that first weekend when the Declaration of Independence was signed. Now we think, of course, of the pursuit of happiness, especially as an individual pursuit. And I think sometimes because we think of these things as individual things that are a part of what is declared to be one of our rights as humans in this nation, because we think of it as an individual pursuit, I think we may fail to see the forest because a single tree is filling our view. In Romans 7, the Apostle Paul says, I can decide what I want to do, but I am powerless to do it. That's basically a modern translation of what Paul says in that Romans 7 passage. And I think we know that like Paul, we can carefully deliberate what we ought to do and make a plan for what we will do. And then at the very moment we are to do it, our plan may have very little to do with how we behave. Sometimes we get so wrapped up then after we have failed in our personal inability to be perfect that we are focused on ourselves and our own failures. And we don't see this bigger picture of how we all contribute to larger cultural systems that dehumanize others and harm our brothers and sisters in this world people whom God has created. The contradiction between desire and action that Paul speaks of happens not just individually, but as a broader culture. Just think about that right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That has been our goal for over 200 years. But as a nation, we've failed to end poverty, We've failed to stop bigotry and violence. We've failed to accomplish some of the very things that would give everyone those rights. 
We have constitutional freedom, but we do not experience true freedom. It seems from what Paul says and from the direction that Jesus is pointing us, that if we have taken Jesus' yoke upon us, if we're pulling in the same direction as Jesus, then we will develop a fierce sense of belonging to each other, a sense of connection in which we will work incredibly hard for what is best for the common good, for the good of those we are under the yoke with, and for the good of those beyond. When we are walking in Jesus' way, burdens are shared, and we are willing to make sacrifices for the public good, because that yoke is a yoke that frees us. You see, freedom does not mean being able to free, being free to do whatever we want to do. Freedom for a Christian means being free for something, being free to love as Jesus loved, being free to hold up the worth and dignity of all people, being free to pull in the same direction as Jesus. We are yoked to him, and because of that, the burdens we used to carry are lifted, and we are now freed for true liberty. We are now freed to go in the directions Jesus is calling us to, and we are free to trust that he will reveal day by day, step by step, where we are to head. He will always walk right alongside us as we do this. Thanks be to God. Amen. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down the weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, weary and worn and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give. The living water, thirsty one, stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank that life-giving, giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, thy morn shall rise, and all the day be bright. I look to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are done. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And also with you. Now, we join millions of Christians all over the world in responding to God's goodness through the giving of our financial resources. Because of your giving, the mission and ministry of this congregation can continue. 
And the ministry of this congregation includes this worship ministry. The wonderful music that we have and the entire team that provides this so that it can be shared with you online. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. As we celebrate on this Independence Day weekend, let us pray for the true freedom that comes from heeding the gospel and exercise that unique freedom of a disciple. Dear God, help us to use our freedom to increase the safety of all people in this land. As people gather throughout this weekend of celebration, help them to be careful. Prompt us to attend to many forms of safety, including food safety, fireworks safety, social distancing, and public safety. May we remember the vision of the Declaration of Independence and renew our efforts to improve our nation so that it may fulfill that vision for all people. Help us to honor the contributions of our fellow citizens of all skin colors and ethnicities and bring us together to build up our communities and this nation. We give thanks for the beneficial use of our taxes, for the development and repair of infrastructure, for public libraries and support of the arts, for education and medical care, for economic relief funding to help our fellow citizens through this time of pandemic. Bless all who call this nation their home, citizens and young adults who have known no other homeland than this one, native families, those whose ancestors immigrated long ago and those who have come more recently, those who await completing their citizenship process and those who celebrate this weekend as new citizens of the United States of America. We give thanks for the privileges and responsibilities of citizenship. As we celebrate this weekend, we ask for the blessings of safe travel, happy mini reunions with family and friends, and for rest and time to enjoy those we love. Watch over and protect us and all the people of our land. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith, Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us towards sustainable living. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the nations, especially the United States and Canada, celebrating their nationhood guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love of our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, oppressed, feeling despair or sick. We pray for members, family, and friends, especially Jean, Dan, Kim, Dawn, Jack, Kenneth, 
CJ, Robert, and for Sarah as she mourns the death of her mother, and for all those we name in our hearts. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for this congregation, bless members of the church council, as well as our steering team members and ministry team leaders, energize children's ministry volunteers as they develop new ways to teach your story and show your love to our families. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways your love transforms our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. May smaller gatherings still leave them feeling treasured and blessed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those living in states where the rates of COVID-19 are jumping so dramatically. We pray especially for the people of Arizona, Texas, and Florida. And we ask for your wisdom and guidance for all people in those states and beyond so that they may quickly lower the rates of transmission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort all who grieve until we are joined with them in new life. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. and perish God endures 
angels sing in adoration in God's presence face to face sun and moon and all creation all who dwell in time and space alleluia alleluia praise with us the god of grace go in peace christ is with you thanks, thanks be, be to, to god, god. Thank you.